What is up, my friend? Welcome to episode 22 of the Anthony John Amick Show. And today, I'm bringing on an epic coach named Shims Hartwell. And if you listen to episode 15, then you know Shims was the guy that led my shadow integration experience in Kona, Hawaii. He's an incredible coach. He's helped me to see some things that I didn't even know even existed. Things like how ancestral lineage healing impacts like a person's life and their business. And I was like, whoa, blown away. And so today I invited him on to the show because I wanted to better understand this and how it impacts life and business. And also, if you're hearing an echo, I'm just going to like be real with you. I am, uh, you know, my wife and I were in the middle of like moving back to Dallas and we just got a place and I'm um, still trying to find a home for the podcast. And so like, man, change up the environment, like it changes the sound of the show. So still working on that. So bear with me. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Anthony John Amix podcast. The one and only podcast designed to help you become unstoppable in life and business. My name is Anthony John Amix. My friends call me AJ. And my goal with this podcast is to help you remember who you truly are. So you can maintain your center in the chaos embody your potential, and unlock freedom in your life and business. That being said, let's get into today's show. All right, well, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking with Shims Hartwell. Shims is an amazing guide and facilitator who specializes in personal and relationship empowerment, and I'll tell you, he's ridiculously good at it, and I have experienced it firsthand. And one thing I really value about Shims is, is that he feels like one of the most integrated dudes, right, that I've really ever been around. And what I mean by that is he's like both masculine and feminine, and he kind of really knows when to lean into and out of like each one of them and knows like has this uncanny ability to know like which is really going to serve the moment the best, you know what I mean? And uh, his work really goes into the core of what is needed for full-on transformation as well. Like this includes physical, mental, sexual, emotional, and of course, you know, my favorite, the spiritual side of things. And over the past 15 years, he has mentored with some of the most influential teachers in the fields of conscious relationship, leadership, healing, and transformation. And he blends his experience and knowledge into a way that really pushes people to the edge of their potential. Now, before I bring Shims on, I want to let you know I have a special gift for you just for listening to the show. I've written a book called Mindset is Not Enough, and I want to give that to you for free. You can have exclusive access to it for 100% free. Simply go to ajamix.com slash book to go ahead and grab your copy for free. It's all about why most entrepreneurs struggle to scale their businesses, lead their teams, and find fulfillment. And it will make everything that we talk about on this episode so much more impactful. So go to ajamix.com to get that book now. So with that being said, Let's just bring Shims onto the show. Bam. And we're here. So, um, man, Shims, welcome to the podcast, brother. I'm excited to have you here. Dude. Mm, great to be with you, AJ. Thanks, man. Man, um, you know, today we're going to be talking about ancestral lineage healing, which is uh, weird and it's crazy. And people are like, what the fuck is that? And we'll talk about like what that is. We'll talk about why it's important. Um, so I want to just kind of hang that and put that there. Now, I've also want to like dive into your story a bit because I've been getting emails. I've been getting direct messages from people. And I didn't know this. I didn't think people wanted to hear a lot of people's story. I thought there was like, Hey, give me the shit. Let me go mm. execute some stuff. But people are really enjoying people's stories. So I'm mm -hmm. going to oblige them and we're going to dive into some stories. And I've had the privilege, man, of you picking me up from Kona airport and just really being with you. We shared stories. Uh, and I, I, I kind of feel like you're like my Hawaiian even though you're not from Hawaii, but you live in Hawaii, <laughs> we'll call you Hawaiian. My Hawaiian brother, who um, I, I, I just feel like you're a bit like family, bro. Like I, I have, feel mm -hmm. a very deep connection with you. Um, really respect you um, a lot. Now you're further down the, the path than me a little bit, but you're a good dude, man. Uh, you're a really good dude. So let's talk about like a little bit of your journey at, for the people. So how did you get started in this game of coaching? Great. First, I, I really appreciate you too, AJ. And it was so awesome to have you come and be in retreat with you. And I'm, I'm feeling similar resonance with you. So mm -hmm. I want to start with that. And I appreciate being here with you. I got into coaching through my own pain and suffering. I came from a very traumatized early family life. And, and, uh, and fortunately, that led me to seek out more help and support and different people to be guides for me. And you got to meet one of them. Dale yeah. was one of my yeah, early guides. He became kind of a spiritual father to me in my early 20s. And I first got into Chinese medicine and acupuncture and I started, you know, and I was very much into Qigong. I did a master's degree in medical Qigong and I was 
into healing and transformation. And as I did acupuncture, I got introduced to Gay and Katie Hendricks, who Gay is a prolific writer. He's got like 30 books out. And with my partner and I at the time, the first workshop I went to with them, I was floored and blown away by the level of authenticity, realness, expression, confrontation, depth. I just was like, holy, what is going on here? And it, and it was like, it was one of those things where it was like one from one paradigm of reality of people not being honest and like conversation below the conversation and being scared to be like real or to confront people unless you're being an asshole to like a room where it was per, there was permission to just get really real. And that led to ultimately my partner and I spending three years apprenticing with Gay and Katie and going all over the country with them and a few other countries, um, absorbing in their work, learning from them, being, being, you know, kind of in their leadership program. And that massively changed my life. Mm -hmm. I went from like being like, you know, a man who would quickly go sensitive and scared and kind of shut down and pull away to like authenticity, realness, seeing what's going on, like having my eyes open to like, oh, I see this going on in you. And and being not caught in my own fear or worry or insecurity, but actually um, curious about it and open to it and not like hiding from it, but like, oh, what's this about? I'm curious. Why do I feel this with you right now? What is this about? And what do I really want here? And basically, it began a really sacred journey for me of, of like taking off a lot of old clothes and, and facing a lot of deep shit that I inherited that was interrupting me from being all the way switched on. Mm. So and, when, when you saw like Gay and Katie, so I just want to back up a little bit. So I'm just curious. So you saw something within them, their relationship dynamic, you were kind of being what I would call and I dude, I've, I have fucking been there and I've shared that vulnerably. The nice guy. And I, I always say that <laughs> nice guys get run over and good guys get laid and paid. Like there, there's a subtle transition, but it's, it's very, mm -hmm. very true. And there's a lot more happiness and fulfillment when we become the good guy or the good woman, right? Rather than the nice lady or the nice man, whatever, right? So did you see something with gay, within gay and within Katie where you're like, I don't know what that is, but I want to be around that because I want to experience like being a human at that level. Is that kind of what led you to them? It was that as well as, I mean, the first time I went to a workshop with them was because my girlfriend wanted to. And I was like, ah, I'd rather be going surfing this weekend or whatever that oh, I want sure. to. And she's like, let's go. And so we went and it, it, Katie Gay wasn't there for the first one. Katie was, yes, her, she had as a woman, she had so much uh, presence and mm -hmm. energy and, and ruthless potency to her as well as heart that like I was immediately drawn to her, like magnetically drawn to like where she's coming from. But more than just her, there were all these people in the container with her who had been working with her for some time. And so all of a sudden the bar was really high mm. of like right away people came up to me and the way they spoke to me, there was just this, this depth and realness and, and it like had me immediately on my edge of insecurity just because they were looking right at me with care and presence, but like immediately inviting me to like show up all the way. And there was multiple people like that. And there were people having these big anger movements in the weekend that terrified me of like, I couldn't do that with my anger. I'd probably hurt somebody. I was so used to having my anger be this thing that like I would go do as an explosion and then feel a bunch of shame about yep. rather than move through me. So, so yes, there was Katie and there was a container. And then as I went at, from that first workshop, we ended up going to a couple's intensive for five days and that was with both of them. And yes, I was blown away by their seamless transitions of hearing one another, giving each other space to speak. And I, literally it was like this magnetic thing of like they're living at another paradigm of relationship that yep. I didn't even know existed. And yep. that's what it was for me. So good, dude. I'm, I'm in a place where I see that as a potentiality and I'm like, man, really pushing for that next level of intimacy mm -hmm. and connection. Uh, it's like, like there's a fog and I know there's an island through that fog, but uh, I'm kind of in this place where my story is, is my wife is like, there's no fucking island over there. And I'm like, yeah, there's an island. We got to go through the fog. So uh, I mean, it's a whole nother topic, whole nother podcast, but I'm excited to connect with you on that one. So let's, let's, let's transition a bit. So how did you get into this whole ancestral lineage healing thing? If you went from a relationship coaching with Gay and Katie uh, really going from being the nice guy to the good guy and, and processing a lot of insecurities and really leveling up from a place of power. Like how did you get into the, the ancestry stuff? There's a, there's a lot of like, I would say roots to this. And some of it was that I was um, 
connected with Native American practices in church, and I've always resonated with the First Nations people, you know, whatever, whatever country or continent they're in, but doing Sweat Lodge and being in circle and, and, and calling in and recognizing where we come from, our ancestors. And mm. I was fortunate to be with um, some Native people who really welcomed the white man in, nice. being a white man that I am, and, and still had an edge, but also were like, you know, we're going to share where we come from. From with you and we're going to trust that because you're here it's because you're you're one of the people who are you have that connection to ancestry and so that started to help me feel that and then um through my practices in qigong and tai chi i would stand an hour a day for for many months even a few years not every day but most days if i could and i started to learn that i had to root deeper into the earth to mm -hmm. find my power and i would stand still and, and my mind would be insane right as we all know, like we, sit, so we get still and try to meditate and the mind just goes on to this crazy insanity of stories and distractions. And then it would start to happen in my body where I'd have pain and waves in my body. And the only way I could start to drop into more of an energetic space was if I rooted. Like I literally felt myself sink and connect more with the ground, with the whatever energy comes through the earth into us that feeds plants and life feeds us. And that practice like really opened doors for me and I started to feel that there's more going on here than my physical reality and my bullshit mm. mind for the most part. And that was very significant. Those were a lot of activations for me. And I started to feel like I have ancestors literally behind me. Like I have beings. So I could call it spirits, you could call it ancestors, you call it angels. There's other forces around me. And as soon as I drop in a deeper level, they're there. They're on tap. And I'm, I'm insane if I think I'm alone here on this planet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and being, being that my father lost his parents at the age of one in Germany, and he, was, he came over really traumatized. He like lived orphans. I didn't know his parents, and my dad is just really unhealthy in a lot of his ways. He's a very wounded young boy still, even though he's a good man in a lot of levels. He's also never been able to really open his heart all the way and connect. And that was hard for me, and so I sought that. And then I, once I finished working again, Kitty, I actually did two years apprenticing and working with relational constellation work with a, a couple that brought Bert Hellinger's work from Europe and, and uh, Germany to the West. And they're both European trade, which is very somatic. And they, it's originally this work comes from African tribes, people who mm. use representations to reconnect with ancestors and to heal where there's been losses, whether it's like a miscarriage or the loss of a brother or a child. Sometimes we can't digest that. Like in our own, in our own well through therapy, we need something to help move that through in a greater level. And so I spent two years working with that, which was massively transforming for me on every level. And I learned to realize that there is so much more going on here that we just mm. simply are asleep to. Yeah, makes sense, dude. So if I'm hearing you correctly, um, it came just kind of because you're open to it. Like you're just kind of like, well, let's see, let's see where this goes. Because in your practice, you're, you're being grounded and let's let's put this into context because I think some people um, here they're very they're very like linear and they're in their brain mm -hmm. a little bit. So let's put some context around this. What do you mean by being rooted into the earth? I know what that Got is because I've experienced with you. But let's just break that down really quickly, and then we'll I'll make Good. this relevant. First, I'd say is it's literally being relaxed and letting gravity move through us to the right. point where like my muscles in my joints are soft and I'm not holding myself up with all these unconscious muscles because I've got low grade tension in my system. Awesome. Like that's where the martial arts powers comes from. Like it's, it's a mixture of training and focus and energy, but it's also a big degree of being able to relax when we relax yep. and have all this energy, like a spring wound up in us to send through our bodies. So rooting is a core aspect of that, but it also is that the, the earth is, got a magnetic frequency that's emanating from it. Just like the sun is radiating energy that heats our planet, right? And brings life to us. The earth does its own form of, of aliveness, just like we all do. And we, the, the, the native people would, you know, call that like life force energy or spirit moving through. The Hawaiians call it mana. The, yeah. the Chinese call it chi, life force. The, the, the Indian culture calls it prana. Yeah. And the, the, so it's all the same energy that's moving through all of us, but also it comes through the earth. And so, I would say grounding is being able to tap that resource. Brilliant. Love it. And being able to relax into it and allow it to move through us as if we're a conduit, just yep. welcoming it, just like energy comes from the sun into us. Yep. So here you are being grounded, right? Being essentially what I would call being in the pocket, like we're, we're mm, here yeah. plugged in. And then from there, you're starting to notice like, man, there's some, there's some things here and you're just being open to it. I've had this experience. You know, I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, without just being open to things. I've had way too many uh, experiences where I was like, well, that's strange, but okay. And I just kind of went with it. 
Uh, Cause dude, I grew up as a conservative Christian, like church of mm-hmm. Christ. The, the scripture is the word, you know, very black and white, no spirits, no demons, no, <laughs> no medianship psychics are very, you know, like very yeah. right wing conservative in Texas, man. But I started mm-hmm. having these experiences, even with like, um, I've never even shared this publicly, but fuck it, I'll do it. Like shadow figures. You guys can go Google shadow figures. And I was like, what the fuck mm-hmm. is that? I remember like being, um, I was like working so much. So when I was trying to get my business off the ground is right after my whole band had like crashed and burned and my identity was like at a loss. And I was trying to get my business started doing graphic design at the time. I was working in my dad's metal shop from like midnight to 8 a.m. I'd come home, sleep two hours, get up grind on trying to get work doing graphic design go to sleep for another two hours get up and like do it again and i did this for a whole month and i was laying in bed one night i'll share the story because it's a pretty powerful story and it's relevant so i was laying in bed one night my girlfriend at the time was there and uh, it was like i don't know what time it was two three in the morning and we had just got a little puppy he's a weimariner he was like eight weeks nine Mm. weeks 12 weeks old or something of that nature i'm laying in the bed and the way the, the bedroom was, was like here, this was the bedroom for those that are watching this on video, but was, there was a hallway, see if I can paint this for people listening, there was a hallway and then it had a door that entered into the living room and kitchen area. And it was an old house, like 1930s model house in the historic part of town. So you couldn't see the front door from the bedroom. So as I'm laying in bed, I'm having this experience where I'm watching, and I didn't know it was a shadow figure at the time, I thought it was somebody breaking into the house. And I was like, what the fuck? Somebody's breaking in the house. And so I'm like laying in bed and I'm processing like, do I, do I want to get up? Do I want to go run? Do I want to go fight? Do I want to protect? And like, I, I just continued laying on the ground because I'm on the bed because I'm like, is this really happening? Well, if I go there, then let me just lay in bed. I'll act like I'm asleep. If he's get here, then we'll take care of it. Mm-hmm. So then this thing comes through the living room, enters the door into the hallway and is coming down the hallway. And this whole time I'm like, am, like, am I fucking hallucinating? Like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> so I like look over at the dog and the dog's looking at this thing. And I'm like, no, this is really happening. But the person, this thing doesn't have any legs. It doesn't look like a human. It's just like a shadow figure. And anyway, it comes all the way to the edge of the bed. And that's when I stood up and swung through it. And it went over me and through the wall and out. And that was an experience where I was like, what the fuck just happened? And the whole time my girlfriend's laying in bed completely asleep. And I'm just like sitting in bed like, what the fuck was that? Am I crazy? Right? And so it's been some experiences like that where that I've experienced personally that have opened my mind. And people are going to listen to this and think I'm a little bit crazy. But for those of you who have an open mind, you're going to experience shit. And if you don't fucking judge it, you can just start. It starts opening up new possibilities. So when that happened, I reached out to my psychic friend, Cheryl Andrea, who runs the psychic fair here in Dallas. She's amazing. And I was like, hey, Cheryl, I had this weird experience. Uh, can you help me make sense of it? And she's like, oh, yeah. And so like, she was like, oh, they, you know, they're from your past life. And they're like, part, you're part of the black slaves. And, da, 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 and they're here to help you. And I was like, oh, I was fucking terrified. <laughs> and so she's like, no, they're here to help you if you just listen. And I was like, okay. So that opened up a whole new world uh for me so i'm just telling people my story Mm -hmm. so they can hear your story where yours is very different where you're plugged into the earth and you're grounded and rooted and you're starting to experience these which is opening your mind to possibilities but you're staying in a place of openness of like well where could this take me and ultimately that's what led you into this game of ancestral lineage should i get all that right pretty close and i appreciate your (laughs) there's a lot more going on than we know and totally and and, and I think a lot of us are underdeveloped in basically our, our power or our energy because we've, we, we're not acknowledging where we've come from. Yeah. So, you know, we don't let, we don't, we're in some ways, we're on the front line of living for all of our ancestors ever before us, whether we like them or not. We're the champions and, of our ancestors is our tagline from the event from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if we deny any part of where we've come from, on some level, we also turn off some of the potential of our aliveness yeah and so and it could simply be a connection of like i well I, I know i come from let's just say a father that was abusive and all that and i don't like him but at the same time i also come from 10 other fathers beyond that and some of those fathers were amazing men to the best of their ability and if i shut off any of that energy basically there's a good chance i'm going to feel lonely on the yeah. planet or i'm not going to feel switched on i'm going to feel unfulfilled i'm not going to feel a part of and part of our disconnection to life and systems that work biologically on the planet has a lot to do with being disconnected from our ancestry. Mm. So this kind of br- brings us into my next question for you is, is like, why do you feel it's important for people to become aware of their ancestors and to bring healing 
to kind of some of that? There's a lot to this. Let me start with, I, I would say the most important reason, I think most of us are a little bit crazy because we live more than in our minds than in our wholeness of awareness, like gut wisdom, deep knowing, heart power and mind. And we're overly mentally active. And I feel it's an exact relationship of like our head being disconnected from our body. And so you think of the same things going on with who we've come from. We don't know what country or where, what our family did for a living three generations back. Whereas in some places they do know, you know, you go to Bali or something, or you go to Hawaii and like, they know their ancestors were here. They know how many generations back, at least a lot of people do. So the reason is that it's not that we have to go back and heal because we're still, every single one of us is on the front line of the shit from our ancestry, whether we know it or not, like, I don't want to be the same father my father was to me, right? And I don't want to act out the anger the way he did or the aggression the way he did. And so wherever he got that from, I'm already having to work with it, whether I like it or not. Right. I'm predisposed to, to, to work through, through whatever happened. So anything our family hasn't digested or hasn't been able to heal or, or face, on some level, we have to face yep. or our children have to face. And that's what the important thing is. Is that, you know, we come with, we've been enculturated by what we've grown up with. Like, for instance, you and I both grew up with a Christian background. I went to church, Sunday school, all that, got a very strong imprint of that. And, and there's a lot of good things about that that were wonderful. Totally. And there were some things that weren't. And I, but I got a lot of beliefs from that, that that can color how I see reality. But I think even the deeper ones have to do with who I've come from and how, what, what my father hasn't been able to, to process inside himself, what he's kind of turned away from that's in the shadows of his being. Yeah, yeah. So That's what's important. I remember, and I shared this on episode 15 of the podcast where we, I talked about how shadow work impacts life and business. And I shared this story from Hawaii where I was in the, the, the cattle graveyard, so to speak, and, and how you had asked us to really visualize um, our, our ancestors joining us, our mothers on our left side, our fathers on our, our right side. I remember it was 13 generations or 15 generations back. It was somewhere around there. And for me, it was like this internal war uh, on my left side was, you know, my mother's side, English, Irish, order, love, harmony, unity. And then on my right side, there was a ton of Vikings, um, wherever that came from. And I don't even know if I'm from Viking lineage or not, but that's what came up in my, in my imagination, visualization. It just, it just appeared, but it made a lot of sense for me because there was so much just anger and like rape, pillage, war, addicted to chaos, almost like. I'm comfortable in the chaos. And the, the bigger part of this is I could see my, my father where I was like, man, he has that same lineage within him. And rather than learning how to befriend anger and channel that anger in a very healthy way, he's just taken the dark side of it, which was this apathy, just like mm -hmm. shut down. Rather than learning how to be a vulnerable man you know, and sharing this openly and moving that energy. And it doesn't mean that we use anger to harm people, but there's a way to, to channel that anger. And that for me, man, you bringing that into my awareness and holding the space for that and leading us through the experience, that was huge for me because I felt like, man, you know, my father's only learning from his father, which learned from his father and, you know, and all of them didn't know how to deal with that shit. So it was either like go to church and fucking sedate with Christianity or just become fucking apathetic and just like hold on to your guilt and shame rather than learning how to free it up and move and express in a really powerful way. You know what I mean? So I think I'm just trying to bring a little bit of clarity for people listening. Mm -hmm. Like this is the impact when you do this type of work and you're open, hello, key insight, when you're open to possibilities to really exploring and just being open to, to what comes up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So do you like ask you a question? What is ancestral lineage healing? I mean, we're talking about our answers, but what is it really? First thing I'll say is that there's a lot of places in our ancestry where let's just say the flow of love or connection got blocked. Yeah. Like there was a loss, there was a fight, there was a, there was a murder. And that blocked the flow of life and something never got healed through that. It got shut down. It got put into the background. Like we, won't, we didn't get faced or seen or witnessed or healed. Right. Yeah. And so on some level that left some form of impression inside of us physiologically in, in a memory in the cells and the blood epigenetically, it gets passed on. 
in some way. And so you can't argue that we don't come from there. You can argue that we don't have past lives, right? And who knows whether we do or not, like whether we lived all these lifetimes, but we can't argue the fact that we come from a lineage of people biologically. Right. And so the truth is, there's a lot of things that have happened, like losses, famines, wars, killing, raping, cheating, lying. And a lot of those things, they just got pushed back into the recesses of the subconscious. I'm not facing that. And we got hardened around that. And so the healing is that what's interesting is a lot of those cycles, they continue unless we shine the sunlight of our attention on them. They will repeat. And so to the best of my ability, I, I still have tendencies of my father, even though like, I think I can consciously go, I don't want to be that way. Those cycles are bigger than my logical, mental, or will. I've got to work with them on a more holistic, whole being level to start to create new cycles inside of me so that I don't go on autopilot and unconsciously repeat the same problem. Totally. Well, e- That's what it's about going down the rabbit hole a bit deeper. It's kind of a mind fuck. But the thing that we're saying, well, I don't want to be like my father. We're so attached to not being that, that we are that. Yes. Right. And we, so lock, in, we lock it in. We lock it in. We, we spend, we spend our whole, like, let's say I never want to be angry like my mother. Well, anytime I feel anger, I don't want to be angry. Anger is controlling my life because I'm repressing it. I'm not, I'm not learning. I'm not, being with it i'm not allowing it i'm not allowing myself responsibility or opportunity to be with the totality of anger so therefore i'm angry i'm just not i'm just like not expressing it right and so i'm still being controlled by the anger and this this is kind of the gift if people are open to it if these are patterns i mean science has proven that these are passed down in humans they've definitely fucking proven that it's passed down in animals and some would say that Mm -hmm. we're, we're animals right And so if these traits are passed down, if we're pushing against it, saying, I am not that, we are that thing. And this is why becoming aware and being with this and bringing light and love and understanding to it is is so, so, so powerful. And I'll just tell you firsthand, the, the results are a couple of things. They're capacity, like you have more capacity to create, Mm -hmm. explore, um, capacity to just be with another human and connect at very deep levels that most um, don't um, experience. I mean, that's a capacity thing. I think another thing it allows us to experience and feel is just an, another layer of freedom. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I always say right along with that, we are created, our creativity comes on tap. And so what does the world need right now? It needs humanity to have a lot of creativity, how to create working systems. We've got a lot of systems that aren't working of how we live in the world, relationally, environmentally, business-wise, economically, and we need to have an adaptability. And if we don't face our shadows or the deeper impressions, for instance, the fear, if I don't have enough money, I'm not safe. Yeah. That's not usually a personal fear. That's a, that's a, that's a passed down fear because people have had to leave their countries and our family makes, you know, money and security the first priority. But truth is, is this in the future, that's not the first priority. The first priority is being able to adapt moment to moment to what's happening in front of us and being able to stay connected and realize our capacity, like you just said, with whoever's in front of us or whatever's in front of us. No matter how much money we have, we still have to face our wife. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, if, and if we don't, and if we don't, and we shut that shit down, it impacts like who we're being in the midst of our doing. I mean, if we're essentially the only way I can anchor this in is like, if I'm not saying something and I'm holding on to guilt with my wife, well, when I go on to showing up at a sales call, that guilt is with me. It's within me. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm going into Mm -hmm. writing a marketing post, I'm not in a place of power and love and like fucking just pure power letting the message come through. It's fucking tainted with bullshit. And as a result, my impression is tainted bullshit. So it's not, it's not pure, right? And, and yeah. this is why it's very, very important for us to walk with integrity. I think I talked about this in a couple episodes back. The Titanic was not sunk with one big, gigantic, smashing hole in the side of the ship. It was sunk with a series of six small little slits. And so integrity, guys, is like a huge, 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 huge piece. And I think a lot of, um, or at least I'm becoming aware of this, a lot of areas that I'm out of integrity with, um, some of the times are just in this area of life that I don't even know exist. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like for yeah. instance, like this lineage stuff, I didn't know I was out of integrity with um, like judging people who weren't committed to growth. And the, re- and the reality for me was I 
didn't accept that part of myself. I didn't accept myself, that part of me that doesn't want to grow, that little child of me who just wants to go out and play and not be worried about, you know, growth and evolution. You know, I didn't love that part of me, so therefore I judge it in another human, right? All of this came about when I'm sitting in the pocket of some of this ancestral lineage stuff that you introduced me to. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate your ability to track your own experience too and what the edges are that you're discovering because that's part of it too is that genuine curiosity of like, yeah. huh, there's so much I don't know I don't know. Yeah. And that's where the ancestral realm is. There's a lot I don't know from where I've come from. And I don't have to go hunting and looking for it, but I can be curious about what might be showing up in my life as a repetitive pattern where I keep hitting the same block with my business. Yep. I keep hitting the same fear that prevents me from taking action. Yep. I keep hitting the same judgment of my wife that prevents me from opening my heart and really loving her or wanting other women instead of like really seeing the, the gifts I have with this woman right in front of me. Yeah. And those are all these movements that are bigger than our cognitive understanding. And we want to start to like face those movements, get curious, discover and work with them so they don't have control of us. Yeah. How has ancestral lineage work um, really impacted you? Like what have been some of your biggest breakthroughs around that? Massively, massively. For one, um, I'm not haunted in the night by fear. Mm. I used to be, I used to like have so much fear at night. Like I was like, something bad's going to happen. Something's going to go wrong. Like, when's it going to go? When's it there? And, and I don't know where that came from, but like that feeling of being disconnected on some level in me had me like at a low grade level inside fear would happen or always assuming the worst case thing's going to happen when like, let's just say the car breaks down. Oh shit, we're going to be stranded here. I'm not going to have money to fix it. No one's ever going to come. Those stories didn't, don't take the front seat inside of me. Like I, I feel like my ability to respond to what's happening is far greater. And then my ability to handle my wife's rage or, or like a situation where let's just say we're in a circle with men and a guy's got like a loaded amount of hatred and charge that like we all know is not even him. He's got like huge energy. My ability to be with that and not have it lodge and get stuck in a bunch of places where I'm not feeling my rage. Yeah. Where all of a sudden I'm uncomfortable and I'm shutting down or I'm like making him wrong for having rage. All that stuff's not there. So good. Like the capacity to like meet what's happening is, is – is just more available. It's not like anything special is going on. It's just that there's less snags to get caught on that would stop me from participating in the moment with what's in front of me. Yeah. So it sounds like- Those it's are a few things. Unlocked a whole nother layer of, of like this raw power for you. Yeah, it's power. It, and then another thing is, is keen intuition and attunement. So when I'm working with a client- it's like there's just a clearer sense of what might be happening for them. Not that I'm pretending I know and that I'm getting all kinds of intuitive guidance, but there's just a, my ability to track, sense, perceive, notice, be aware of what's going on is just heightened in a way because it's heightened inside of me. Because yeah. I'm aware of my inner reality, I have more sensitive awareness of another person's experience. Makes perfect sense. Maybe it's due to you're at a place where you've done so much work, and I think I, I can track with this as well. I do, I'm at a place and maybe, and I know you're at this place too, where you don't feel like you have something to prove or defend. You don't feel like you have mm -hmm. to justify actions. And so therefore it gives you again, more capacity, a whole nother layer of fucking freedom to be with another person's expression because you can just kind of be with it. You hold space for it. You yeah. can also bring the totality of your expression to them without having to justify or defend the expression. And you can sit in the pocket and you can kind of know like, should I say this? Should I not say this? Should I say this? Should I not say this? And it's coming through you and you're like, no, I'm going to hold on to that one. Or sometimes mm. it's like, no, I'm going to say that one. But it's coming from, it's like the integration between our, our like I, I would feel like our whole, our whole being, our, our mind, our body, our soul. And it's not just our mind or our heart or it's, it's, it's all of them like intertwined together, creating this perfect dance, knowing when to push and pull, creating a whole nother level of freedom. Is that making sense? Absolutely. And I really appreciate your analogy of the pocket because it's, it's just in this place that's really right there in the response level. Yep. And, and what I think freedom is, is the ability to respond rather than react. So good. Yes. And, and the pocket is a place where I'm listening. What would be, and even if I say the wrong thing and the person doesn't resonate with it, I can come right back and go, oh yeah, that was off. 
cool and recalibrate. And it's not like there's some story that, oh, I fucked up as a coach and I didn't say the right thing. It's like, oh, cool, that was off. That wasn't accurate. Great, yeah. now I know. And yeah. so I just, it's like, it doesn't stop me from going back into listening at a deeper level. And, and this is a lot there. It, it has to do with us, like you've said, the word integrity. And I love the word integrity as wholeness, that I'm operating on all burners. Yep. I'm not just operating on this mental burner that thinks it can understand and rationalize and perceive and read all the books and know about relationships and reality. I'm operating out of a deeper one that's willing to experience without knowing. So good, dude. It's willing to meet what's in front of me because we're never prepared to have a baby. You're never prepared to like make the biggest business deal of your life. You're going to have to grow into it while it's happening. And that's the big illusion. We think we can get all prepared for the fight when really, no, we can, we can only prepare so much. And there's always this gap between where we think we're ready for and where we're really ready for. And we have to meet that gap again and again in life, right? So good. And, and the like more clear we are and the more we trust that we have ancestors, guides, something moving through us for the benefit that wants us to thrive, the more we trust that. Yep. You know, and the more we trust ourselves to meet what's happening. So good. And I talked about this a bit in the episode 15. Because talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, moving through us. And it wasn't like the Holy Spirit. It's just what people are searching. But the spirit, prana, yeah. whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? <laughs> and so you're using this fight analogy. And, and I had Guy Mesger on the podcast. He's former UFC champion. I forgot if he was episode seven or eight. But you guys can go check that out. And I remember the, like training with him in the gym one day. And he always has these little sound bites at the end of training that are really darn good. And one of those was we're talking about him and his training. And he was like, man, the, the, the fights that were the hardest for me is when I, um, I didn't get my ass kicked in training. Like if, if the fight was hard, it's because my training was too easy. But if my training was really hard, which it was the majority of the time, then the fight was easy. And so I think it's like another really good avenue of talking about life and to me i i learned about this pocket like and 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 boxing training like really good boxers can sit in the pocket and they know when to move mm. and push and pull and throw and and all of this stuff they're just very calm in the pocket right and i think this happens a lot with life but people are wanting some hack and they don't realize how much work that you put on a daily basis breath work um, movement work your your qigong practices like you're putting in the fucking reps that allow you to have the capacity to be in the pocket. <laughs> and I don't think enough people are talking about that part of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that people want to understand more rather than build a greater capacity for experience. Yeah. But the only way you learn like in jujitsu, the only way you learn jujitsu is you get on the mat and you get your ass kicked. It's the only yeah. way you'll learn. Like you <laughs> have a coach there and they can show you the moves and all of that. But it, at the end of the day, you're just going to get with another guy or gal and you're going to fucking roll and you're going to get your ass kicked until you just get better and better and better and better. And I feel like life and this idea of us experiencing freedom, us experiencing a new level of success in our life, whatever that is, different things for different people, a new level of freedom, a new level of purpose. It comes down to our willingness just to be a fucking human being and play the game, enjoy the game, get dirty, you know what I mean? And have mm. some really good habits that allow us to fucking plug in through breath work, mm. through meditation or qigong or whatever. There's so many paths up the mountain, right? There's so many paths. So whichever yes. ones inspire you, fantastic. So let's shift gears, man. Um, how does somebody really go about kind of accessing and healing their ancestral lineage? I encourage people who've never done it to simply light a candle and just say, thank you for where I've come from. Awesome. Thank you to, you know, my, my mother and my fathers and beyond and beyond. And just to welcome that, like, I'm willing to have a relationship with you. And, and I know I, my life is impacted and is here and blessed by you. So first is simply like this intention of like, I really want to feel where I come from and I want to honor that. I Like, you know, people talk about gratitude practice like yep. across the board right now, right? On the neurological level. And it's so true. But what a part of it is like, I just want to simply be thankful for where I come from and all the blessings of my life because my family went through whatever they went through to have me be here. So that's an access point. I love that. And yeah, and that's one of just simply building a relationship. Makes sense. And to then, me. and then I also add in once we've done that, like, can you feel that you you have some degree of of beings living behind you that are like they're they're behind you? I get like when I access, I could feel I've got. I've got whatever you want to call it, like a force of life or something moving through me. 
And you, I liked when you said the Holy Ghost, in a certain way, like God's spirit life. I don't want to separate to only be a force of God, which I believe in. Sure. But I think it's also God coming through a lot of other channels than just one point of spirit. It's, it's multidimensional. Totally. And it's coming through the blessing of the air we believe, breathe from plants. It's coming from, from where we've come from. And the more we just simply acknowledge and have respect and appreciation for. And then if something comes up where I still have charge with my dad for beating me, for instance, am I willing to like really forgive him and, and say what I need to say of like, hey, listen, if I never said to my dad, I need, whether he hears me or not, dad, I still, I still have like hatred and love for you. Yeah. And my, the hurt of like the way that you hit me or the way I watched you hit my brother, like I still have a lot of charge about that. And I want to like forgive you for that because I know you did the best you could do. Mm-hmm. Or that at least on some level, this was the greatest capacity you had. And to do some degree of making peace with the impressions we may still hold, not to make it okay, but just to allow ourselves to free any need to hold that so, good. so that we don't keep carrying it forward. And then the next level is, okay, where am I repeating the shadow sides of myself that I may have learned habitually from family, from my history, from my environment I grew up in? Am I willing to start to shine the light of my attention on the things I don't want to see about myself, where I'm repeating the same fears, patterns, aggression, behaviors, stonewalling, whatever they are, start to like, look at that and meet that and go, hey, what, what is this about me? And do I really want to do that? And what does it feel like in my body when I, when I treat my wife that way or my child that way? And just start to like get really connected to the response inside of us and, and how it doesn't feel good to us mm. to clear it. Awesome. Do you feel like we have a duty or a responsibility to bring healing to our ancestors? I'm not a, I don't believe we need to heal our ancestors necessarily other than we need to heal what's within us that we may have, you know, picked up from them. You know, I believe that when we leave our body on some level and we end this life, we are probably a little bit clearer on the other side, that some things that we've done here get, get left behind. And so like, even if I had a really unhealthy ancestor on the other side, they may have a greater capacity to connect with me or be clearer in whatever way. But I believe I want to bring the responsibility to my court of like, what might I still be carrying? What, what pattern am I still holding? What charge am I still carrying? Like we, we often carry the repressed emotional charge that we absorb from our parents. Yep. And, and am I willing to do that for the benefit of all of us? But mostly for me, I think it's a good selfish thing. I want to clear that for me so that I, I can show up in the world more fully and more clearly and more in integrity. I think you have to do it for you. And here's why I say this, because I want to make this very clear. Um, I've had a client before where he had a a bullshit belief that he had to carry the shadow of his grandfather. Mm. And it was fucking making him so angry. It was super fucking heavy. It had to do Mm. with with some some deep shit. And I was like, who told you you had to carry your grandfather's shadow, bro? And he's like, I don't know. I was like, yeah, it's a bullshit belief to keep you fucking unhappy from dealing with your own shit. So don't bring that bullshit that you have to be responsible for his fucking shadow. That's bullshit. And that's ultimately using consciousness to be in fucking drama and self-sabotage is what that is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I like that you're saying, no, this is selfish. This is for me. This is me finding another level of freedom because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that we have any control over. Everything else is other people's business and that's their experience, right? Yes, absolutely. And this is a great edge because a lot of us feel, like I, I just worked with a client right before our call here and, and she's still on some level as a little girl, she's still trying to take care of her father, like yeah. his pain, his outbursts of anger. And so we need to free ourselves of like that responsibility. That's his responsibility. And any level, we're still trying to do it for our parents. In some ways we take away their dignity. Totally. Because we, on, we believe they can't or they won't. And the truth is, we don't know. And if we're doing it for them on some unconscious level and, and being chameleons and changing and trying to soften around them and just to like basically be- not believe they have a capacity, it doesn't serve either of us. No, I, mean, I really feel like separating like what's mine and what's yours. And I picked up things that I'm impact- impacted by, but not everything. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the reality is, is it's, it's rooted in drama. And I haven't gone into this, but you and I can dialogue about this you're being a hero. You're trying to hero someone else's happiness, whether they're alive or dead. And at any point, if we ever try on the hero archetype in the drama triangle, 
we always attract victims and villains. And over time, the hero <laughs> becomes the victim because they become resentful yeah. or the person who, you know, came in and said, okay, I'll let you save me. You know, I'm, they're, they're subconsciously agreeing to the victim role as well. Well, they're going to become resentful at some point because the agreement, the subconscious agreement, whether spoken or unspoken, was created in drama and drama always reaps drama, right? And I'm at a place yeah. where I don't think that we ever fully step out of drama shims. I actually mm -hmm. think drama is one of the greatest teachers we have because it gives us the contrast here in the human experience. So I believe currently, and it may change, but currently, I believe that the game is becoming, how quick can we become aware of when, I'm, when am I in drama and how do I shift mm -hmm. out of drama as fast as possible? The faster I can do that, the faster I'm just back in power, back in power, back in power, co-creating with the people that I want to co-create, whether living or dead or source or whatever. Yeah. Beautifully said. I'm 100% with you. A lot of it's literally stepping off the drama triangle and being able to get into response for the yeah. reaction. Usually the drama continues because we're positioned in some ways and reacting and thinking we're right and that they're not and we go back and forth and it, we waste a bunch of energy. Awesome. Or, or, or and underneath all that is basically there's a lot of fear that, that underneath that, that we're not going to be okay or something bad is going to happen. So we take this fixed position totally. and we, and it basically, it limits our view, our ability to really see things clearly. Yep. And that's why we have family feuds that go on for generations in different countries all around the world, because we're addicted to the drama and the fear rather than really willing to burn through it and transform it and to see where we're aligned rather than where we're different. Totally makes sense. For those who are listening and they're, they're like getting this whole thing and they're kind of seeing some value in this, if they're at a place where they're thinking like, well, maybe they're adopted, so they don't really know who their biological family is, or they don't really know anything about parts of their family, can they still access this? I believe they can just through intention, but I want to hear it from you because you're kind of the master at this. <laughs> I'm not a master, but yes, <laughs> I, I, absolutely. 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 Like, in fact, it's even more important if we had some degree of severance of a lack of connection and we were adopted for whatever reason, it's even more vital that we know that not only do we, we want to bless and be thankful for our adopted parents, but at the same time to make a connection to our lineage so we feel a part of something bigger than like, you know, it's it, than our small world. And this is like Steve Jobs was adopted, right? And part of his fire for what he did and his way of being in the world, from what I understand, it came from some unhealed wounds. Even though he had phenomenal adopted parents, he also had some deeper seeded places of not belonging, not being a part of, not having connection. And so it led to partially the brilliance of Apple, but also the personality he had, which burned a lot of bridges and made a lot of messes, at least from my understanding, and wasn't really a healthy way of being. Yeah. Even though it was an effective way to create this phenomenal business, but also it's got a shadow side, right? Exactly. Exactly. He ran, he ran over a lot of people in that process through his energy and his intensity. And that came possibly from some unhealed deep things that he didn't know or have the tools or the support to really face and be with. Yeah. Or willingness. <laughs> yeah. Potential. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, dude. Well, dude, we, we've kind of have been all over the place. Are there any like parting uh, words, any parting advice that you want to give anybody around, you know, this whole idea of shadow work and ancient ancestral lineage or anything of that nature, anything coming through you that you really feel led to share with them? Absolutely. I, I believe that our intention and willingness is so profoundly powerful that whether you even get poured around doing deeper work or not, your, your heart's sincere intention of like, yeah, I want to simply connect with my ancestors and, and have that be a part of my life that I honor and allow to happen through me or simply take that to shadow work. Like, yeah, there are some repetitive things. I'm willing to really look at those and like to simply be open, like you said quite a few times in the call. Yeah, I'm open to look at what, what may I not be seeing? What may I not be aware of? Aware of? I want to create more space in my consciousness and willingness to allow that to be revealed to me, to start to allow new patterns or behaviors to come online, to come alive. Awesome. I'm a fan of us getting support, but I also know each one of us has more capacity than usually we are even aware of. And it comes through our willingness and openness. Brilliant. Awesome. Well, my friends, Shims Hartwell, we've dived into this whole idea of, you know, how our ancient ancestral lineage impacts our life and business. And just real quick, if you guys want to learn more about Shims, because he's an amazing guy. I mean, he really is. If 
you're looking for some relationship coaching, go check him out, shimshartwell.com. Uh, it looks like they, you have something where they could sign up for where it says empower your life and relationships and they can give you their name, email and get some cool stuff there, right? Yep, you got it. And then I have even have a scheduling if they want to have a quick call to hop on Brilliant. and meet me on some level to see about potentially working together. Brilliant. And then you also have your Men's Leadership Council, which is a year-long mentorship for emerging leaders. Are you still taking applications for that as well? I, I have one or two more spots for that right now. And then I have, we'll have, uh, I have like a nine-week men's course that comes up in March. And then I have another men's retreat in, in uh, September or in uh, end of May in, in Lake Tahoe area that I do, which are really incredible experiences of man wants to come have an experience uh, of being a container with really incredible men who are plugged into their power, but also their hearts and to yep. apply that and be in the woods and do deep work is, it's a great opportunity as well. And I'll have, that'll be on my website in the next couple of days again. And I'll tell those who are listening, if you're, if you're a dude and you're looking for a place to plug into, I, I go, go to Tahoe, go to his next event. I went to his event um, in Hawaii. It was fantastic. And one of my biggest fears about going to the event was if I show up in the totality of my monster truck like nature, is it okay? And it was okay. It was very powerful for me. The other thing that was really powerful for me was being around, and I don't know how to say this any, any different, what I felt like was balanced men. I feel mm -hmm. like there's, there's lots of men's types of events and a lot of it I see in the marketplace is hoorah, rah, rah. We're wearing tap out and affliction shirts and how fucking manly can we be and go skin grizz, right? And there's a time and place for that. But I, I'm at this place in life where, dude, I grew up, I hunted, I understand all of that shit and how to be, you know, John Wayne fucking redneck cowboy. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I also wanted to find well, how can I be vulnerable and how can I be soft, but also how can I be fucking raw and real and, and find the delicate balance of knowing when to push and pull. And I think one of the things that you're doing very brilliantly, number one, is you embody that and live that as a human being yourself, Shims. But the men that you're able to attract and bring into your experience that you create and craft for everybody, um, they're just, they're amazing, dude. They're, they're really balanced mm. men. Uh, I, I feel like, I don't feel like they're too soft. Like I would say too conscious or we're fucking hiding with consciousness and new age hugs and hippie bullshit. I'm down with that too, <laughs> but there's a time and place where I'm like, fuck, I don't want to kumbaya. I want to go punch somebody in the face. And so finding, finding that balance, I think is something that's really, really, really cool uh, what you're doing. So if you're listening, you're a man, you're looking for a place, shimsheartwell.com relationship, shimsheartwell.com. So Shams, dude, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, AG. Really appreciate you, brother. Welcome. Well, there you have it straight from the horse's mouth. That's what they say here in the South. I don't even know what that means, but there you have it. Mr. Shims Hartwell, ladies and gentlemen, I told you he'd be bringing the goods when it comes to understanding this whole thing about how ancestral lineage healing impacts your life and business. I hope you got some value from it. I know I learned a few things from asking Shim some of these questions, and I really hope this has served uh, you powerfully as well. In fact, I really would like to hear from you. I mean, if you'll just go to iTunes and leave me a rating and review for the show, I, number one, would love it. And several other people have already done that. And uh, man, is this a really, really great way for me to understand how this podcast is impacting people? Because oftentimes I, I shoot these episodes and man, I don't know. I'm just like, hey, I think this is will help people. It's help me. I think it'd help you too. I mean, take Sam Preston, for instance. He says this is a must-listen podcast, and he goes on to say that I bring the fire with every episode, and I have an uncanny ability to ask deep, tough questions that bring light, actionable steps to apply to one's life, and he highly recommends the podcast. So, Sam, dude, thank you so much for the kind words, my man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And for those listening today, if you found a lot of value from this episode, please go out to iTunes and leave me a rating and review because it really helps this podcast reach the hearts and minds of more people. And that is my entire intention and goal with this show. So with that being said, this is officially the end of this specific episode. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you because you could be choosing to listen to anything else but this show, and you still chose this. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, my friend. Until next time, I'm out. Peace. Well, that's all I've got for this episode of the Anthony John Amix podcast, but we have plenty more to help you become unstoppable in life and business. So head on over to ajamix.com for exclusive resources, information, and tools to help you break through to a new level of freedom, purpose, and success. I look forward to having you back for the next episode. Bye for now.